Hi there. In this video, I wanted to introduce the concept of characteristic functions for random variables. But we're going to be doing it in sort of a preparation for another sort of proof of the weak law of large numbers. Okay, so what's the sort of basic idea behind characteristic functions? Well, the idea is that if I'm trying to prove something in my sort of about my random variable x or about random variables in general, then a sort of first stab at that is normal, normally to sort of think about, well, can I prove it in terms of their probability distribution? Um, can I prove it just in terms of the properties of that random variable x as it stands? Well, sometimes that's not possible. But I can transform my random variable to a new space, which I'm going to call characteristic function space, or another sort of um, transform you can think about is something which is called the moment generating function space. And then if I can prove something about my random variable in this space, then it turns out that this holds when I sort of transform back to my random variable. So I would have actually proved that sort of thing that I was trying to prove about my original random variable. So why can we do this? Well, the idea is that for every different random variable, so whether it be Poisson, normal, binomial, each type of random variable has its own unique characteristic function. So if we sort of think about an example, um, random variable x1, that has a characteristic function cf1. Variable 2 has a characteristic function cf2. Yeah, and you can sort of think about this for every different type of um, random variable. There is an associated characteristic function. So it's just sort of one-to-one -one mapping. But this mapping also holds going the reverse way. So for every particular type of characteristic function, there is only one type of random variable with an associated probability density that can satisfy that particular characteristic function. So this property is a very nice property for characteristic functions to have because if we can show that, let's say, variables x1 and x2 have the same characteristic function, then they must represent the same underlying random variable because there's only one characteristic function per random variable and vice versa. So that's why we sort of deal with characteristic functions. They're quite a nice, that's sort of a, quite a nice property for them to have and it allows us to prove some theorems which we wouldn't be able to prove without their use actually. So what does it actually mean to find the characteristic function? Well, the characteristic function of random variable x is defined in terms of some parameter t, which is part of the transform, and it's defined as being equal to the expectation of e to the i t x. And, well, what, what does that mean? Well, we just use the law of the unconscious statistician, which is we integrate from minus infinity to plus infinity, e to the i t x times our probability density. Yeah? So that's how we sort of calculate our characteristic function. And in general, this isn't necessarily that easy a thing to do because really what we should be using here, because it's a sort of complex integral, is we should be doing some sort of complex analysis. Um, which in, in sort of principle isn't necessarily that hard to do, but it assumes that you know about complex analysis. Well, what are some of the properties which characteristic functions have? Well, one of the nice properties is that if I have a whole host of independent random variables, x1 through, let's say, xp, then I can find the characteristic function for that sort of group as a whole. So that's the characteristic function of x1 sort of through xp as a sort of group, as a function of t. Well, that's just equal to, in the case of independent random variables, the product of the individual characteristic functions. So that's phi of x1 times phi of x2 as a function of t sort of times all the way through to phi of xp as a function of this parameter t. So that's quite a nice property for characteristic functions to have. If I have independent random variables, then the characteristic function of that group of random variables is just equal to the characteristic function of each random variable on its own multiplied by the other ones. So that's a nice property for it to have. Another nice property which characteristic functions have is that phi of some constant a times that random variable x in terms of this parameter t 
is just the same as phi of x as a function of a times t. And that's quite easy to see because if I um, sort of multiply x by a, then it sort of just comes up here in terms of uh, I get sort of e to the i t a x. But of course, that's just the same thing as instead of parameterizing in terms of t, I parameterized in terms of a times t, and I sort of kept x as it was, because that would still be e to the i t a x. The order of sort of multiplication of a times x or t times a times x doesn't matter. So that's another property which characteristic functions have. So here I've detailed some of the sort of basic properties of characteristic functions. It's been a bit of a whistle-stop tour, but I just wanted to introduce this concept now so that we can use it for our sort of another proof of the weak law of large numbers. So that's what we're going to cover in the next video. I'll see you then.